Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Learning Programming using Scala. We continue looking at our array-based stack and queue. In the last video we finished the stack. In this video we're going to turn to implementing the queue. And I also want to introduce the concept of test-driven development. So this is going to kind of change things around in, in how we approach things. In an earlier video, so we not only implemented our stack, we also wrote some unit tests for our stack, and the, the concept of unit testing was introduced, as well as the JUnit framework. Uh, this is just giving you a little taste of what you can do with, with JUnit. I want to now implement my queue and make an array queue. But I want to take this from the approach of what's called test-driven development. And as the name implies, test-driven development uses tests to drive all the development. When you do test-driven development, you're actually not supposed to write any code unless a test motivates you to do it. Now, I can go ahead in here and I can create a new class of my array queue. And we'll go ahead and copy out the methods from my queue. Array queue of A extends my queue of A. And then I put in the methods. Uh, and what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to give these basically default implementations, uh, some of which are going to be harder than others. These two are actually interesting. Uh, <laughs> how about I, because it turns out I can't do, if I save, we have the error because these aren't implemented. I can't do equals null because it turns out that A might not be an allowed null type. Uh, I can't do equals zero because obviously if it's a string or something, zero isn't a valid value. How about I act like I have a data element and I return it. And then because we know we're going to have an array, I will go ahead and put in that array and I'll make it size 10, just like what I started with in my stack. Uh, up and as we saw last time, if I want to make an array of this, I need to include a manifest. Okay, this compiles. Now, the thing with test-driven development is at this point I am supposed to stop. Uh, you want to write as little code as possible to get it so that this compiles. Okay? Um, and now I'm supposed to write my tests. So I'm gonna come into here and I am going to make a new class and we'll call it test array Q. I'm actually perfectly happy copying over uh, most of the code from in here. In particular, I want to copy over my imports and we'll make a few changes to these. The idea of test-driven development is that you start off by writing the tests. Okay. So let's change these so they don't use the array stack, they instead use the array queue, queue, okay, and I'll import my array queue. Uh, I should not call it stack Let's come in here and let's do a refactor and a rename. Okay, and I'm happy with that, <laughs> but it didn't rename the one that has an error. And oh, um, yeah, I was afraid it might do something like that. paste, home, paste, home, paste. Copy. 
copy paste 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 Okay, and now normally if I were doing this, I might start writing just a few tests uh, and alternate back and forth. But the idea here is that I don't actually write any additional code inside of my array queue until I have a red bar. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna comment out this one. So I'll assume I haven't written this test yet. And now I want to write enough of my queue so that I can get rid of this red bar. So it turns out that for, actually let's go ahead, let's comment out everything, do this one test at a time. So there's my before, maybe we'll uncomment out those. And then I run. So this says that it's on, when I create it, it's supposed to be empty. Well it turns out the easiest way to get rid of that bar it's just to say, hey, make it return true, <laughs> green bar. Uh, however, of course, if I do that, and then I also uncomment off this test, now when I run it, I'm back to a red bar. And this one's going to take a little bit more writing uh, for, for how we do this. So let's think a little bit about how our array queue works. So when we were talking about the stack, I you know, made a little something to look kind of like a stack. A uh, bunch of numbers. Um, okay, let's take this back down to uh, length of six. Okay. For the stack, we kept one variable, and that was the top of the stack. And that's all that we needed. And that top of the stack just moved along, and for every push, it went to higher indexes, and for every pop, it went to lower indexes. For this, we're doing a queue. And the queue needs to keep track of not only, not one end, but two. You need the front of the queue and the back of the queue. And so the, as you're taught in uh, early in school, you're supposed to get in line at the back of the line and you don't cut. And the idea is that people are being serviced at the front of the line. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to write the letters B and F for a back and a front. So those are two other things that I'm going to need in here. I'll go ahead and declare those private, uh, var back equals zero, private var front equals zero. Okay, so what happens if this is our starting configuration? So back and front are both zero, they both reference this first index, and I enqueue an element, okay? Because it is empty, it is, uh, I have a, uh, and I have nothing on it. Um, so I can't really dequeue or, or peek, I shouldn't. So what happens when I enqueue? Well, when you enqueue, you're supposed to get on at the back. This is the back. So let's say I enqueue my five. Then the back now moves to here. So here's my front, here's my back. And when I enqueue something new, say a two, it goes at the back and the back moves down. So by this definition, where, when is the thing empty? Well, it was empty when we started off, and it's not empty now. And so the condition that we could say here is possibly front is equal to back. If those two values are the same, we're gonna say our queue is empty. Yeah. Peak, now, as I've said before, I like writing the easy ones first. So how do we peek into this queue? Well, peak should give me back the thing that would come off next. So if I were to, what's the, the next thing that should be serviced? It's the thing at the front. And so it's not data sub zero, but data sub front. When we enqueue, at least with the drawing that I've written up here so far, what we were supposed to do is stick a value into data, data sub, sorry, sub back equals O. And then back was supposed to increment. And I could also, uh, okay, well let's see if now this, is this enough to pass my tests? Let's, let's keep going with my test driven development. Hey, look, that actually passed my test. So now let's uncomment out my third test. 
and see what happens. Oh, red bar again. Okay, so whatever I'm doing, it's not quite sufficient. Let's look at what my error message was here. It says assert not equal expected seven but was five. Well, that's because when I do my DQ here, it's always returning the sub zero, uh, always. And that was not the value that we're supposed to have. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, we make the DQ so that it actually works. And what I need to do here, I'm gonna go ahead and put some curly braces. I want to return the value that is, well, I could do something very much like what we did for a stack. When I DQ on this, I want to return this five, the thing at the front, and I wanna move the front forward. I'll go ahead and I'll create a temporary variable. And I'm going to return that value, and then front gets incremented. Let's see, is that sufficient? Okay, so run, hmm, push three, pop three, expected seven, but was five. What do we have going wrong here? Where it is supposed to in queue five to seven. Oh, duh. actually, this is called too much copy and paste. When we, and this shouldn't actually be, let's change our names here. So we'll in queue and then DQ three, and because it's a queue, it should take them off in the same order that it added them. This is why you're supposed to keep your tests simple so that you know when your tests are correct versus wrong. I have enough code to pass these three tests. Okay. That should make me happy. Let's write one more test in here. How about I write a test that in queue DQ of 15 by three. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to enqueue these three things, and then I'm going to DQ them. And I can check that it's uh, empty. And then I'm gonna do it again and again. That's three, four, five. I wanna do this five times. I could change the numbers so it's not five, two, seven, five, two, seven all the time, but this is a sufficient test for what I want to do right now. And now when I run this, oh, I got a red bar and it crashed and it says array index out of bounds, exception 10. Now, we've had that error before. That error happened with our array stack when the stack got too big. But in this case, I never put more than three things on my queue at a time. I put three things on, but then I take them off. And I put three things on and I take them off. So what happens with our current code when we do this? So five, two, seven. And then I pop them all off, which means that now my front is back to here because they're, it's empty. Uh, these values are still here. I didn't actually clear them off, uh, but I'm past them. And so now I push a five, I push a two, or sorry, in queue a five, in queue a two, in queue a seven. Oh, where did that go? Now this is run over the end. And so you might be tempted, well, let's just make it bigger. But I really only have three things on here. I don't want to allocate more memory when I don't need to. So for our array-based queue, what we do is we make it circular. We make it so that when either the front or the back gets all the way past the end, it wraps around to the beginning. You could do this with an if. So I here where I have my back plus equals one, I could say if back is greater than or equal to data dot length back equals zero. Okay. That would work and do what I wanted. I could also do the same thing here for, for my DQ. I don't like to do it that way for reasons that will hopefully become obvious in the fairly near future. Instead, I like to do this with modulo arithmetic. So I add one to back and then I do modulo data dot length. So when this has a length of six, 
This is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When it got up here to 6, which is what we had just a second ago, where, where it would go naturally at that point, 6 modulo 6 is 0. So it wraps back around to the beginning. And so every time it gets past the end, the modulo wraps it back around. And I want to do the same thing for my front. Modulo data dot length. So is that sufficient to pass my current tests? Indeed it is. I got a green bar again. So notice I didn't have to allocate any more memory. It just wraps things around. Uh, and, and I am able to push 15 things on and then dequeue them. And everything is happy because I did it in groups of three. What about our last test? The one that we had written for our stack. Shouldn't be called push pop. How about NQ? DQ, we NQ, but now I do not reverse them. And I run, ah, oh, red bar. Yeah. Um, and this is weird, expected 402, but was 841. What the heck happened here? This is not the error type of error that we got on our stack. Uh, and the reason is because our NQ continues to wrap around. If I add 100 things to this queue using our current code, all that happens is that the back value just keeps wrapping, 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 wrapping. And it's not until I start dequeuing stuff that front goes and takes something off. Okay, so I never go out of bounds. I can't go out of bounds because I'm forcefully keeping things inside of the bounds. However, I do have a minor problem, which is that uh, I can basically overfill this, just, just keep going on top of things. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll look at how to fix this last error, okay? how, what we have to do to grow our queue.